everybody, what's going on? My name is John Solo and today I'm going to tell you a messed up story. The story of Snow White. You're probably thinking, John, I've heard this story a thousand times at this point. It's nothing new. But let me stop you right there. The Snow White that you're referring to, the one that we're all familiar with, is a Disney adaptation of a Brothers Grimm fairy tale from back in the day. There's definitely some dark elements to it, but it's nothing compared to the original. Actually, I think the original Snow White is the darkest of the stories we've covered so far. Before we dive into it though, let's take a look at Disney's version just to refresh our memories. The 1937 film introduces us to a beautiful young woman named Snow White, whose skin is white as snow and lips are red as a rose. Snow White's stepmother, the evil queen, is totally insecure. She has a magic mirror that she constantly asks, who's the fairest lady in the land? For a long time, the mirror always said the queen was the fairest, thus boosting her ego, but one day it makes the mistake of answering Snow White. Out of pure jealousy, the queen orders a huntsman to kill Snow White, but when push comes to shove, he can't make himself do it. She runs away, finds refuge with seven dwarves, and lives with them for a time. At some point, Snow White's stepmother finds out she's alive, so she plans on killing her with a poisoned apple. Surprisingly, this actually works, but the queen ends up being struck by lightning anyways, and Snow White is saved by true love's kiss. And she marries a prince, so she wins. I think we can all agree that Disney's version is fantastic, but if you're like me, you like your stories to have a little more attempted murder. Fortunately, the Grimm Brothers story has that in spades. That story starts a little earlier than the movie did. Snow White is still the princess, and she still has a totally insecure evil stepmother, but she's only seven seven years old when the jealous queen orders the huntsman to kill her. Luckily for Snow White, the huntsman has a conscience. Instead of killing her in the woods and taking her lungs and liver back to the evil queen so she could eat them, he lets her go and kills a wandering bear cub in her place. Snow White runs through the woods for hours until she comes upon a cottage with a surprising amount of child-sized furniture in it. As you might guess, this house belongs to the seven dwarves. One big difference between this story and Disney's I found really interesting. In this story, the house is described as being being neater and cleaner than could be told, while in the movie, the house is a mess. I'm not sure why that change was made, but the rest of the scene lines up pretty well. Snow White passes out in one of the dwarves' beds and wakes up to find herself surrounded by dwarves. They tell her that in exchange for keeping the house clean and making them food, she can live there no problem and they'll take care of her. So that's what they do. Not long after this agreement is made, the evil queen needs another ego boost, so she goes to her mirror and asks it the infamous question, who is the fairest of them all? The all-knowing mirror that can only tell the truth answers the queen with a name she didn't expect to hear, Snow White. Imagine her surprise. Not only did she think Snow White was dead, she thought she ate her lungs and liver. Naturally, she's infuriated and decides that she will stop at nothing to kill that seven-year-old girl. Jealousy is an ugly color. The queen tries to take out Snow White on three separate occasions. The first time, she disguises herself as an old woman selling lace and offers to lace Snow White up properly. I don't know exactly what that means, but I would imagine it has something to do with a corset maybe, because apparently the queen tied the lace so tight that Snow White couldn't breathe and passed out from lack of oxygen. Not kidding, that's actually what happens, but luckily the dwarves come back just in time to loosen up the corset or whatever, and Snow White can breathe again. For the second murder attempt, the queen dresses up as a different old lady and gives Snow White a poison comb that knocks her unconscious when she uses it. This time, the poison wasn't strong enough to take out Snow White for good, but the low self steam queen learned her lesson and chose to make her a poisoned apple. She also chose to dress like a farmer's wife for this attempt because she figured there was no way Snow White was going to trust a third mysterious old lady. As the old saying goes though, third time's a charm. The queen actually convinces Snow White to take a bite out of the poisoned apple and she dies. A while later, the dwarves come back to the house to find her body and they're so heartbroken by her death, they can't make themselves bury her. Instead, they put her in a glass coffin like the one in the movie and they brought it to the mountains where they mined for gold and silver so one of them could always be watching over it. Sometime later, a prince actually ends up staying with the dwarves while he's traveling through the woods, and when he's there, he sees Snow White in her coffin and thinks she's beautiful. He then somehow manages to convince the dwarves that if they let him take Snow White's body with him back to the castle, he'll take care of her. I don't know how he does it. And then, while one of the four servants carrying Snow White's coffin on his shoulders trips on a tree stump, the sudden jolt in movement causes a bite of poison ash apple to become unlodged out of Snow White's throat and she wakes up, no problem. And then the exact thing that you're expecting to happen 
happens. The prince proposes to Snow White and she says yes. We're not done yet though, because my favorite part is next. Because Snow White was marrying into a royal family, her evil queen stepmother was invited. She was so angry about Snow White's happiness that she actually decided to attend the wedding. And when she got there, they made her wear iron slippers that had been heated up over a fire and dance until she died. That is what we call a left turn. It's kind of like what happened at the end of Cinderella, but I felt like that at least made some sense. In this story, she goes straight from watching the wedding to putting on those slippers. No segue in between. Written by M. Night Shyamalan, am I right? So now it's time I ask, what do you think of this story? I enjoyed it a decent amount, but the one thing that left me confused was that Snow White was seven years old when she died, and when she woke up, she was ready to marry the prince immediately. Like, it doesn't even say if any time has passed, so I'm a little concerned. Outside of that weirdness, I thought it was a pretty good story. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe with notifications on for weekly Disney content, and share this video with someone you know who might like it. I've also got links to all my social medias in the description down below. That's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Give those a like or follow to stay updated on what I'm doing between videos and for extra Star Wars and Disney related content. I can't say it enough, so I'll say it one more time. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is John Solo, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.